Hello, welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I almost once had a deathgasm. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Deathgasm, which came out in 2015, written and directed by Jason Howden. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Brody, who has just moved to the town of Greypoint in New Zealand to live with his uncle after his mum has been arrested. Brody is a heavy metal fan and a bit of a nerd and has just started a band with his friends, but he can't play. So after stealing some ancient manuscript from an aging rock star, he's able to unleash a demonic power onto the town and has to try to save the girl and the world. Wait, 3 a.m. Pacific or Eastern time? Do demons recognize daylight savings? Deathgasm didn't have a theatrical release. It went to several film festivals where it did win a few awards. Yeah. And this is the directorial debut of Jason Howden, who is mainly a visual effects uh, artist. He worked on films like Avengers Assemble. Wow. War for the Planet of the Apes. The Wolverine. Mm. You know, see, this this is a guy with, with, spe with a special effects background yeah. who's now decided to move into direction. And... Deathgasm I saw when it first came out on Netflix a fair few years ago. Wow. And it was a film that I, you know, you see the poster for it and you're like, death metal, horror, gore. This should be yeah. great. Yeah. But once the film was over, I was just kind of like, meh, it's another one of them. Just, yeah. And now watching it again, I'm just kind of like, mm, yeah, it's just another one of them. <laughs> I, I didn't see it when it... Um first came out so this was the first time for me but I you know I wikied it and and I was kind of excited like Gary said you know heavy metal mixed with with blood and gore and demons and things like that and we've watched a lot of New Zealand movies recently yeah you know and so that I was happy with it you know it ticked all the right boxes but a part of me was wary with that because I'm like you know if something is too good it's it's too good and so when the film obviously started up, I did laugh when we get the opening introduction from Brody right. talking about how you know his mum went on a his mum went on a massive drugs binge, you know, sucked off a Santa Claus in the mall, and you see her arrested, uh, arrested her mugshot, yeah, yeah, and he's sent to live with his religious uncle and his fucking obnoxious cousin, yeah. And so you're just like, okay, so this is the kind of a coming of age story for this boy. You know, I already know what's going to happen. He's going to go there. He's going to release these demons. And he, he's going to kind of save the day. He's the, he's the hero. He's the guy we want to get behind. Milo Cawthorn plays Brody, And he kind of reminds me of me when I was right. that age. You know, <laughs> into rock music. You know, there was nothing else but rock music. Not really heavy metal. I think I don't I don't think we've ever really been into that kind of death metal metal metal. <laughs> I mean I, not know, really now. I was gonna say I'll go Black Sabbath, but you know, you've gone children of Bodom like deep. No. You know, but not like <laughs> not like European German death metal, you know, slaughtering no. lambs on the stage kind of smearing No, no. Yeah. Not to the extreme, no. But, I mean, the film's opening title sequence is, <laughs> was really cool. Yeah. You know, that's, that, that was what made me go, oh, actually, man, maybe this film is going to be really good. Because when you have an animated title sequence like that with yes. the music playing, you know. The, the guy playing the penis as it's spinning. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, you got these demons coming out of everywhere. I was like, okay, this, this, this can work. Yeah, but it took me back to Night of the Demons. And yeah, and that worked <laughs> for me. And it didn't for me. So I was wary going into the movie. Obviously, Brody uh, walks around the school when we get introduced to his friends. Sam Berkeley, who plays Dion, and Daniel Creswell, who plays Giles. <sighs> Cliché, nerdy, role-playing, bullied kids. You know, but I was kind of behind it because of its, I suppose it's New Zealand kind of low-budget stature. Yeah. You know, taking me back to bad taste, it's like, I, I didn't know who the director was. I knew it was his direct uh, directorial debut. But I didn't realise he'd come from a special effects background. Right. You know, I there was something about the film that said to me, script is going to be a bit ropey. You know, camera angles are going to be a bit 
off the shoot, shall we say. But there, there is a cool camera angle later on where I, I think it's Zach grabs the camera as it turns to another actor. Yeah, So yeah. it kind of breaks full four. That was pretty cool. And Bro Brody has recently met Medina as well, played by Kimberly Crosman. It's funny because <sighs> she was a Power Ranger. Yeah. And and so was the so uh, was so Brody. Brody. Yeah. <laughs> and two different Power Ranger shows. <laughs> That's quite badass. I've got some images now in my head. But uh, uh, I did like the Medina character. I don't like how how her character develops and we'll get into that. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, there was that one bit with the headphones. That bit's cool. That is very cool. <laughs> Brody goes to the local uh, record store and talks to the guy who owns it about some music and gets introduced to Zach, played by James Blake. Now, Zach is a tornado of chaos. Well, he's what? Uh, neutral chaos, according to the, uh, the nerds. Yeah. <laughs> Which is his alignment. I expected this. He's chaotic, neutral, and you're lawful good. Your alignment's just totally mismatched. Which, it, which it translates to asshole. Yes. Only cares about himself. Yeah. And just, okay, yeah, I suppose we could blame it on his upbringing. Mm. But then again, I mean, look at you, you when you compare him to Brody. Yeah. I, I, I did like their brotherly love. To each other, Brotherhood of Steel. I did think that was pretty cool. It came really quick, though. Yes. It's like, mean, it wasn't earned at all. <laughs> it's like Brody latched on to Zack really quickly because he yeah. needed a friend. And Zack was, well, is going to use Brody for his advantage. Yeah, yeah. But they set up their band with Dion and Giles. And, I mean... I did enjoy the sequence where they're trying to come up with band names. And that was where the, the cool camera angle happened with, with Zach. Because he he says, we'll call ourselves Deathgasm. And then Brody tries to say a title. And he pulls the camera back and goes, I told you, we're fucking Deathgasm. I'm like, nice. Deathgasm! I did like the fact as well, I mean, we just recently reviewed Housebound and the teacher for Brody's class is played by the same guy who was in Housebound. So, if I, I, like I said, it ticked all the right boxes that I'm like, wow, this is going to be as good as Housebound. But as the time ticked on, the film started to kind of drag, you know, but the pacing, I'm gonna, I've never been a big follower for pacing. It's just if the film keeps my attention. I was waiting for the demons to turn up, you know. I'm, I've heard that the demons are supposed to supposed to be quite gory and there's shit going on. But they have to go to the house of Ricky Daggers and get the pages from him. That was a cool little sequence with just his foul mouth. Right. <laughs> giving them shit. I can't remember. What did they go there for? Was it for his record? Was it just to find him? The reason why they wanted to go was because they found the piece of paper in the local magazine. That said yeah. that the location to Ricky Daggers was in a, a, a boring ass town in the middle of nowhere. And Grey Point is a boring ass town in the middle of nowhere. But because that information had gone out as well, the local satanic group led by Aeon has found out about it and has sent a hitman. I did laugh at the death of that hitman. Yeah, it was kind of, kind you know, because he fails his mission and when he comes back to report that he, that he fucked up... He gets decapitated. <laughs> and then pisses blood all over this this fucking ancient rug. And so he tells him to... So Aeon basically tells them to do it again. And so they reenact decapitating this guy again. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, you know, it... it it is kind of funny, you know, it's kind of like yeah. a Monty Python sketch, but I just didn't find it that funny, you know, because I'm like, I don't know who this guy yeah, is. Yeah, I was about I, to say you that. Know, th this rug, you know, that ties the room together hasn't even been established. <laughs> yeah. So why he cares about this rug or not. Who and then are these two guys in the fucking mask? You know, it's like there's a whole thing going on behind this manuscript. There's a whole thing going on between his legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who hasn't got a gag reflex now? <laughs> You know, they've gone to this house of Ricky Daggers. They've come across this ancient manuscript, which is the Black Hymn, which the the satanic group is after. Because if you play it, 
you know, a, this demon uh, Ezeroth or uh, any off or well, something. It, they need to translate the music and then the lyrics to mm -hmm. figure out what it... They, well, they don't really translate it, do they? I mean, Brody says, yeah, I, I think I can read it and starts to play it. And it's literally like, what? I don't play music, but it's literally done, 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 done. Dan. It sounds like the tutorial, you know, your first music lesson. Because they go into like a hypnotic stance and they just get kind of overwhelmed by the music. Yeah. Which hearkened to Evil Dead for me. Yeah, yeah. There was a very strong hint to Evil Dead for me, which kind of re reinvigorated, I suppose, my, my viewing of the film. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, okay, cool. I'm back into it. And you... The uh, uncle comes out to the garage and starts complaining about the noise, how they shouldn't be playing this devil music. And he kind of gets weirdly possessed. The film kind of drops it there. And yeah. you're like, oh, okay. Well, well, we've still got more, we've still got what, 45 minutes of the film to go. So maybe something will happen. <laughs> Brody hooks up with Medina and they... Well, he had that one sequence in the classroom where he's doodling in his book and he makes this comment to the teacher. Yeah. And Medina kind of notices him because of what he had said. Yeah. It's, it's also the bully sequence as well with the cousin. She, she, she didn't like the way he was being treated. So, you know, Brody's the nice guy. The cousin's the bit of a dick. Yeah. And so she, you know, she comes to talk to him. And he talks to her about rock music and metal. Yeah. And uh, and then you have that sequence which you mentioned earlier where she's now listening to her, her CD Walkman. <laughs> I was like, wow. Because <laughs> yeah. well, we had that part where Brody listening to music and he's on the hill with a woman on his legs just playing this guitar. Yeah. It's like the f metal fantasy. Yeah. But then to see it from Medina's point of view where she's on the hill with an axe and two women on her legs, I was like... I'm reinvigorated again, Gary. Yeah, that, was, that was nice. <laughs> I'm being reinvigorated. Whoa. The music video, i got to admit, was pretty funny. Well, uh, Intestinal bungee jump. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> the weird thing about this film was that I, I kept wanting to be a teenager again to watch this film. Because it was stuff that we would have been doing back in the day. You know, hey, let's take the camera out to the woods, paint our faces up and make a video. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and see what we can do with it. And watching these guys do it, even though it was being parodied, it was still looking quite fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this film has lots of film and metal references to it. Yeah. I mean, them being out there in the woods making a, their music video... You know, it, it's like it, it's hinting at one of the most awful metal music videos ever made where they filmed it out in the woods. Yeah. And yeah. it just looks ropey and daft, you know. It's <laughs> out of, your, you're out of your element. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Medina's kind of interested in Brody, and Brody's obviously infatuated with her. Yeah. And she slips, you know, well, she's trying to get hold of him, but he's just had his face, you know, pulverized yeah. by, by his cousin and, the, and these asshole bullies. And uh, so Medina gives this this letter to Zach. It's like, don't read it. Give 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 it to Brody. And of course, Zach reads it immediately. And it's yeah. like, meet up at the park nine o'clock. And he doesn't even tell Brody. He just turns up. You know, yeah, yeah, because he's because he's bored. Yeah, you know. And uh, and before long, you know, they're making out. He fucking lies to Medina. You know, like oh, you know, Brody's not interested in you, and she's really upset. Cause you know, she genuinely thought he was. And then Zach's all over it. And I was just like, at this point, this is where the film started to make me feel really shit. Zach sat in his room. He's been beaten up by his fucking cousin. His uncle hates him. You know, the, the his closest brother, I suppose, is getting off with the girl that he's actually infatuated with. And I, I did kind of feel like I just want to turn the film off. But I just, I, you know, okay, yeah, he's going he's gonna to raise a, a demon. He's going to raise the demons and fucking kill everything in the town and save the girl but is that the good thing yeah because you know zach comes back and they get the band back together and play the hymn and the garage door opens and they infect the whole town but it's not instantaneous everybody is 
spewing blood and guts and fucking crazy shits over and it's really funny but unlike the evil dead where you know they get possessed and then the next thing you know somebody's getting their fucking head ripped off all the infected are gone or well, the demons are gone <laughs> everybody yeah everybody just carries on with their day you know they the kids even go to school but while they're in class the teacher he's trying to perform the lesson but he's also possessed by a demon because he starts shitting blood <laughs> Are you okay? And he turns around and he vomits blood in her face. Yeah. Uh, and again. <laughs> See, I, oh, most of the townsfolk are possessed by demons, but it seems that if they wear sunglasses, they are able to pretend that they're not demons. Because you have that moment where the demon comes into the bathroom to Brody with he the glasses. Slides in on a skateboard. Just or something. Slides in and he's just like he starts talking to Brody like. Rah, rah, rah. I, I actually couldn't understand it. It took me a while to actually realise he was asking about the black him and playing and shit. And I realised the same thing with the teacher. The teacher's got his glasses on as well. Right. But I'm like, so. I'm going to have to wait another 15 minutes until shit really starts kicking off because you guys want to wait around for your demon lord to turn up. Because they're, because the, the kids actually didn't summon the the demon. He's coming later on. Well, they've, they've prepared the gateway, I suppose, for him to, to be summoned. Y yeah. Now they just have to wait for the a full red moon. Oh, right, yeah, that's right. They have to do it at the Red Moon at 3 a.m. They yeah. only realised that after they've spoken to the psychic lady. Yes. That's like 20 minutes away. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking demons? Abigail. Fucking Abigail, you know, the, the chick from the, from the record store, the psychic chick. She knows all about this stuff. We should go see her. But you also have the guy that we saw earlier in the film turn up into the town. Yeah, Aeon. And, and he's explaining that, you know, he's the one who's come here for the power and he's the one who wanted the, you know, the pages to begin with. Yeah, yeah. And um, he wants to get possessed because then he'll become more powerful, yeah. But then he gets killed off by the woman his, that he had. Yeah, his girlfriend. Yeah. I don't even know her name. No, me neither. Like, that completely threw me off. Well, she I, just stabs him a few times and yeah. he's dead. And it's like, okay, so, yeah. It was a cool betrayal, but... Like, who is she? Who was he in he, the first yeah. place? It, uh... he, he was Aeon, I looked it up. Okay. He was Aeon. Yeah. Of, I don't even know the name of the Black Cult. They just seem to be no. the Black Cult. Or yeah. the Cult of Alioth, I suppose. But the town has obviously now gone completely berserk. And Zack and Brody, after killing Zack's dad, have... Decided to head back to Brody's house to pick up the pages because Brody knows that it's his fault. He's released these demons, he was feeling shitty, and um, he wants to kind of reverse it. But Zach's like, no, fuck you, let's watch the world burn. We're going to go up to Lookout Point and get fucking wasted and shit because he's an asshole. And Brody's like, no, fuck you, I'll do this shit on my own. And I'm like, okay, right, Brody's starting to stand up for himself. Brilliant. Maybe this will be a turning point for Zach. No, not yet. Uh, but they get back to Brody's house and Zach hides another note from, jo from Giles, Dion and Medina telling them that they've gone to the local school uh, to hide away from the demons. Yeah. Medina has gone fucking full badass at this moment. She's got herself an axe. And even though she's still kind of the ditzy blonde, she's a ditzy blonde with a fucking axe. And she's a hell of a lot better than Dion with the fucking paintball gun of D10s. <laughs> yeah. That was very funny. I, yeah. I did like that. But it's the effect of it hitting the zombie, the possessed guy in the head. That was pretty cool. As is, I mean, the axe and the. <laughs> Brody and Zach get back to the house, though, and they get attacked by Brody's uncle and auntie. Yeah. And But they're in their, they're in their bedroom. Yeah. And whilst they're going through their stuff, they find a bunch of sex toys, like a lot of them. <laughs> I did, did like the joke. It's like, oh, look, it's church stuff. Maybe we've got crosses and holy water. And then he pulls out this big black double-ended dildo and you're like. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, they're into some kinky stuff, despite being really um, uptight. 
you'd expect them to be a little bit more chilled, considering they've got all this stuff they're playing with. No, no, the, the worst ones are the ones that are most uptight. <laughs> you know, the, the chilled ones are the ones that are really cool. But they proceed to, to kill his family with the sex toys in, in slow-mo. Yeah. I mean, it was a cool fight, but then after a while, I'm like, it's taking ages. It is taking ages because they're enjoying the joke. Yeah, you know <laughs> they they fight for so long with dildos, dildos and anal beads and all this other shit, which was funny at first, and then Brody says to him, "Hold them off for a moment," and runs out for a chainsaw, which I was like, "Well, that's a bit silly now because they can't you, you know, he's gonna get his ass kicked." We knew the chainsaw was coming after we saw the blades of it. Yeah, early on in the film, it was like that's coming back. But that's it. I mean, they already know that the town is possessed, and they've just left a garage full of weaponry. That there was a garage full of fucking blades at Brody's house that they decided to use the joke of anal beads. But he comes back with the chainsaw and then slips on the rug, <laughs> and it stretches the joke out even more. Yeah. When when Zach had pulled into the bedroom and Brody has to fight his auntie on his own. But Zack ends up beating the, the uncle to death with a dildo, which I did think was quite funny with him just repeatedly stabbing him in the mouth. Good gore effects. I mean, let's give the director credit. His, the gore effects were... Top notch. Yes. It is, the special effects, his, his background and the work that he's put into this film is amazing when it comes to the practical visual effects. Yeah, I mean... The gore is incredible. And they finish off the ante with the chainsaw and sit down and relax. Yeah. <laughs> and then the cousin comes walking in, unpossessed, and asks, what the fuck did you do to my family? And Brody, without hesitation, just goes up and decapitates him with the chainsaw. <laughs> and then sits back down again. And Zach's just like, hey, you know, uh, he wasn't possessed. Yeah. And Brody's just like, yeah, and? And? I swear he said Satan as he walked in. Didn't you hear him say Satan when he walked in? I heard him say Satan when he walked in. He said uh, something about Satan. You didn't hear him say that? And I'm just like, I hate both of you now. <laughs> like, Zach is just an asshole, and Brody is now a murderer. Yeah. He, he can he can play the excuse that the town's gone to, gone to shit, which is your fault. Yeah, yeah. You have also just killed your you know your uncle and auntie, which I know you didn't care for much, but that was your family, which you have just brutally murdered. Yeah. And now your cousin, which yes, granted, beat you up and and, and pissed on you at some point. Yeah. But you the the fact that he is so nonchalant about it the fact that he just really doesn't care just makes me go i don't care about you either and so at this point in the film i'm like who do i care about oh that's it no one i kind of care for medina she's such a non character though she's a character who went you know she she she's she, again just a non character yeah, who she, had a transformation she kind of reminds me of apple from from turbo kid you know like i said that's just that cutesy ditzy blonde playing in the background who's quite a bit of a badass and it's it's a gory horror movie i mean i am like i said i i i i get where you're coming from because with me the film up and down you know at this point i was just like oh, we got like fucking 15 minutes left 20 15 minutes you're going to you're going to stuff all the ending of this story into this ending it's like after leaving the house the the pages are just whipped away by i don't know the force yeah. and they've now got to go around the town and we get inundated with a bunch of more special effect uh, gory kills that they collect all the pages evil dead styly and end up at the school now, Brody notices something um, inside the school and heads in there and comes across Medina, Dion and Giles. And you're like, oh, the Scooby gang are back together. But you're feeling really uncomfortable because Zach doesn't want them to be there. He wants Brody all for himself. Brody wants Medina. Everybody wants to get the fuck out of there. But nobody seems to be knowing what, what they're supposed to be doing. Like, these three kids were sat in this school all on their own lonesome. No adults, everybody else is dead and didn't think, oh, we should leave. Oh, no, we're waiting for Brody and Zach. Yeah, but Zach's a fucking dick, you know? Yeah. And then the whole revelation about, I didn't get that note. And I didn't get that note that told me oh, that you were here either. Yeah, yeah the note twist. And then <laughs> Zach, you know, going, oh, and, and storming off. Like, yeah, I mean, 
I tried to feel emotional about it. You know, the two brothers had broken up. But I'd already known that Zach was a fucking asshole that I was waiting for Brody to find out. And then when Brody did find out, he got his ass handed to him. And yeah, okay, he got the girl then, which was cool. And then he turns to De uh, Dion and Giles like, we need to go get these pages and, and we need to head back to Ricky Dagger's place where there's these amps and I can play the music and try and cure the world. And it's like, okay, we need to go outside though and it's really scary. Cut sequence, they're already there. I'm like, no way, film. <laughs> you did not just set up the fact that there was going to be a big fucking battle sequence with these four fucking characters and then... Out there. It's going to be crazy and we don't have a car without Zach. Zach can eat my ass. We don't need him. Let's tear shit up. Yeah, it did feel like, did feel that way. I mean, there was enough moments of, of gore and blood, like, uh, you know, Zach with the dual wielding chainsaws, jumping over a tire, or bouncing off a tire to yeah. chop them up. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but, but that was Zach. I didn't like, I didn't like yeah. Zach, you know? Yeah. Okay, Zach is cool and he's doing all these cool things, but he's also a fucking dick. I want to see more of Medina. You know, you've got Dion and Giles there who, at the moment, are weak characters. They are really weak and I'm waiting for them to die, but I don't want them to die because I'm supposed to be getting behind them because they're supposed to be a tight-knit group of friends. You know, it, they were and they weren't. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But because now it is their time to die. Yeah, well, that, well, that's <laughs> it. They get to the house and they, they get in there and the black cult turns up and everybody's captured. I'm like, fuck's sake, really? I know you got. I know you got to keep it close to the wire to save the day, but... Just tying them up just seems really fucking boring. Yeah. You know, they stuff them in this room and the body of Ricky Daggers comes back to life and tries to attack them while uh, the Black Colt are trying to uh, bring Azeroth from the, the other dimension. Zack finally turns up again and kills Ricky. And he's all painted up. Yeah. You know, he's actually got himself painted up and... You know, came back to save his brother, which I'm like, okay, is it a character turning point for him now? Because because he's decided to come back because we had that scene earlier where he was just driving out of town, and he was just like, yeah, I ain't going back there, you know, well, I'm leaving. I, I don't. And Brody had to convince him to come back. That's it. I don't think I could forgive my brother that close if he'd made out with the girl that I was supposed to be going out with. Yeah. You know, it'd also be kind of awkward with her, but you know, she, she's got tits, I suppose. Um. They rush out into the room to try and stop the summoning, um, but Dion is separated in such a tiny little house. <laughs> right. He gets his head ripped off, which was cool. Yeah, yeah. It reminded me of Return of the Living Dead Part 3. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and Giles is torn in half. He gets his arms and legs ripped off. And you think Zack has been killed, but he manages to, to escape from the uh, infected outside and manages to do that whirlwind chainsaw death leap thing which was which was pretty cool but it's now down to Brody to play the music backwards and from memory and from memory because the papers have been destroyed to try to send the demon back and the demon possesses the girl who stabbed Aeon she gets her tits out which was cool but just as she's being possessed, she's stabbed in the back by Zack, who is considered the blackest motherfucker closest to Aeon, and he is possessed. And it's a really bad mask, <laughs> special effect. I mean, I... <sighs> it, it, it is like cheap late 90s monster yeah. <laughs> looking. Yeah. You know, it's not very effective, especially after every, you know, all the gory kills, you know, with the gallons of blood everywhere, with the demon head, it was just like... Is, is that it? And he starts to kick the shit out of everybody, teleporting all around the room. And he gores Brody right in the stomach yeah, as well. I was yeah. just like, okay, yeah. it's. Well. I thought he'd killed Medina at one point, but he just seemed to knock her out. Yeah. And then, I don't know, Brody, he doesn't play the the black hymn, does he? he no. He plays a solo, which... It's just some metal riff of yeah, some kind. Which is so badass, it brings Zack's soul back to contain Azeroth. But he can't contain him because he's too powerful and he must die to go back to hell with Azeroth. And Elroth. Yeah. The demon. <laughs> uh, 
And that's what we get. We get we they he uses the razor blade that they used at the beginning to give themselves AIDS. And he kills Zack with it. So basically he's just given Zack AIDS and killed him. And that's the kind of I thought that was gonna be the end of the film. It was just like it was such a dark moment. The, the emotion, the whole town's fucked. They've saved the day, kind of. He's got the girl, I'm feeling good. And then it's like two months later. I'm like, wow, I guess that wound in his stomach wasn't that bad at all. It's not even left a scar. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they're laying in bed and everything's hunky-dory, you know? Yeah, I kind of knew that was going to happen, but I was just I'm like... I'm just like, there's, there's no mental trauma from killing his family, his entire the, town being wiped that's out it. by he's, monsters. He's living in the house with, uh, that his uncle and auntie has. the life of a metalhead. Yeah. <laughs> and this, the music that he's listening to starts to make really demonic noises, and all of a sudden we hear Zach's voice. And he's making a joke, and that's the end of the film. It's kind of setting up a sequel. No, just kidding, dude. Zach? There are memorable scenes in the film. I love the intro credits. I really enjoyed the intro credits. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, the I animation cool. style and the music. It was kind of like that. That that got me invested in, into the film. That that tells you you're, you're going to have a good time. I love the uh, the fantasy rock poses mm. uh, that both Brody has and that Medina has afterwards. Yeah. It was like the, the contrast between the two fantasies was yeah was great. Um, but I think that the the sequence that made me laugh the most was when uh, when Brody and Zach get Rick rolled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's like a, a Rick re the retro movie. retro Rick roll where when they get the record back and he pulls out the record and he's like fuck. Rick exactly. Ashley, never going to give you up. It's like, Matt, that's, that's some funny writing. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Dude, what the hell? It's a fucking Rick Ashley record. I suppose most of mine are just mainly the gory kills. You know, they, they were really fucking ingenious. I mean, Zach, Zach had some of the best ones. He had the, uh, the spinning whirlwind chainsaw of death through the air. That was... You know, easily easy to film, but still fun to watch. Um, sticking the chainsaw up the guy's ass. Oh yeah, the, yeah. At the end, that was uh, that was over the top. Uh, Medina saving Dion and Giles. You know, it's just it was a good turning point. I was glad that she wasn't the uh, screaming, bumbling damsel in distress. Yeah. You know, she was actually. I've got an axe. I'm a fucking badass. Uh, I think that was the rock music. Um, yeah, like I said, the animation for the beginning was really good, uh, but. Like I said, that's what threw me off. I was just like, mm, it's it's there's a lot of effort put into this animation to get me invested too early. You know, I suppose that maybe that's why I like Housebound a little bit more because it was a slow casual build up, you know, over time and then big reveal at the end. Mm. Where this was like, we've got all these great things. An hour into the fucking film. You know, um, I see the bullying sequences were a bit fucking harsh. You know, I was wanting to get behind Brody. I did want him to be the big hero and to get the girl at the end. And he was getting fucked over by everybody, including Zach. But Zach gets all the good shit. Dion and Giles are like a bit parts comic bit relief parts. moments. Yeah. And then when they die, I'm like, well, that's a bit harsh. You know, yeah. what the fuck did they do? They didn't barely do anything but, you know even with their deaths you know Brody didn't even care you know, he didn't he's not even shed a tear you know it's not even a moment of oh my friends are dead yeah my family's dead there's just nothing it's like nothing registers as to what's going on in the whole only film, when Zach dies does he go oh my god my brother's dead oh. yeah and I'm just like who cares about that fucking dickhead <laughs> yeah. I don't <laughs> that's kind of, that's kind of it and I, sp I suppose that's how I felt at the end of the film and the film was you know, telling me like, oh look, we're gonna set Zach up again and maybe hell. And I'm like, why? Can we not try and rescue Dion and Giles? You know, can can, can we? I don't know, bring like a demonic baby in in on Medina. My absolute favorite scene though was the again sequence with Aeon. I laughed hard at that one, but because I knew the hitman was gonna be punished and he got his head cut off. But when he screams at them to do it again, and then you sit there and watch them do it again, like like you said, Monty Python style. I love the guy on the right who's doing his hand gesture. Like, <laughs> yeah. And the head rolls off, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Idiots. You put a tarp down first. Do it again.
That's good. Yeah, I think they worked. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then it's just like better. You know, and then her that woman's head pops up like oh, and he's like oh. oh. <laughs> it was uh, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's it's interesting actually uh, with this film because I spoke to you after I'd watched it. And you were telling me how you didn't find it interesting. You found it quite boring. Yeah, yeah. And then a couple of hours later, I spoke to a friend of ours um, who's a big heavy metal fan and mentioned to him that we'd watched it. And he said he absolutely loved the film. Yeah. And I felt on the fence with it, honestly. You know, I, I'm i not sure if I do recommend it or not. I suppose I do if you're into horror movies and heavy metal music and you want to laugh. Um, but you know, don't, don't fucking take it as gospel that this film's any good. You might be like me and be like, halfway through I got bored. Mm, yeah. You know, I kept thinking of other heavy metal movies. I was, I was thinking about Spinal Tap and Hesher, you know, actual other heavy metal movies I'd rather watch while I was watching this. And I thought, no, that's, it's not fair. I should be thinking about this. But like I said, I kept getting, I get, get, I, I kept getting reinvigorated with the movie. It kept bringing me back up and then dropping me back down again, bringing me back up and then dropping me back down. And then once it ended, I was happy just to turn it off. Yeah. So. Yeah, the, for me, the film could do with some some tweaks here and here with the script uh, to, to flesh out the characters a little bit more because it just felt like anything that happened in the film didn't really matter. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I'm, you know... I only really half recommend the film myself. It is Bill and Ted meet the Evil Dead. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it, it's something I think I should love. But for me, this film just really falls flat. I also didn't think it was very original. Um, I, I love the metal approach. Uh, and, uh, you know, and some of its use of demon slaying weapons are uh, particularly amusing. Yeah. <laughs> but most, of, all of the characters really don't give a shit. You know, the lead character coldly murders his cousin you know if you love the horror genre though and splatter and gore you know inspired by sam raimi and uh, peter jackson movies yeah. uh, and if you're a fan of their horror films then you, you should check this one out especially for its practical visual effects yeah as for character or style i find it incredibly lacking i was not invested in them or the story it's an average film but it's a really good first attempt from this director. Yeah. You're pretty good at whipping guys off, bro. We are brothers of Thanks for watching Off the Shelf Reviews. When life sucks and, and you feel alone and empty, stick on some metal and life is better because, because somebody else knows the pain and, and the rage that you're going through, you know?